Yes, I'm so excited about another one. Yes, another bodyboarder here with me tonight on Everything About Everything videos. I'm Patty Serrano, your host, and really looking forward to tonight only because Jordan and I go way back, and I'm just really excited to talk a little bit about some of the things we did early on on the internet and then where he's evolved to today. So let's welcome in Jordan all the way from Hawaii. How you doing, Jordan? <laughs> Good. How you doing? Thanks for having me here. Yeah, look at all those boards back there. I can't wait to dig into all that stuff and see what you got. Yeah. So there's, there's quite a few pressures here, just you know, just a few of them, but yeah, all good. Yeah, that's so cool. So for those of you that uh, have never met Jordan before, he lives in Hawaii, and he uh, is a board collector, and so we're going to talk a little bit about his quiver. But before we get started, I wanted to uh, see if you remember the – I always like to do this, particularly on the history of bodyboarding where you and I met because it always usually goes way back. Do, do you remember? Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. I I probably met you for the first time at one of the BIAs, right? I'm trying to remember if I met you before. I knew Debbie before. I used to ride for Custom X, but then, you know, I moved to San Diego in 1994 and got heavily involved in the BIA. So I'm pretty sure we met then. That's probably and right. I might have met you in the, yeah, BIM shop in Oceanside also. Was that correct? I'm trying to remember if you had shop. I think it goes way back because the thing that I think was most impressive, I mean, as far as mm. when we're looking at the history and all my videos that I'm doing about bodyboarding anyway, I like to just kind of delve into like, because it's such a long 45 year history is yeah. this whole thing where it got started. But, you know, what you did, I don't know if you remember, was you contacted me. You knew that I was getting into video and you contacted mm -hmm. me somewhere around, oh gosh, I'm going to say 06 maybe mm -hmm. a little bit later and said, Hey, yeah. what do you think about putting some videos up on the internet so that people see them? Well, I, you know, this was like kind of early YouTube and all that. And we, uh, this gentleman that was uh, training me had a, a, a channel on live stream, which I've gone back mm -hmm. and looked to see if it was there, you know, but it was, it was called live stream and you could actually leave your video on all the time. And so we decided to take your videos and your photographs and just put them up for whoever could find them. But yeah. here's the best part about it. I think I remember you and I saying, well, what do we call this thing? And we bounced back and forth. Do you remember? Yeah. I remember because that. Yeah. All on the internet. So what do you call a, a channel? You know, today it's whatever. So we mm -hmm. ended up naming it BIM web TV. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's how BIM web TV got started and it still kind of hangs on to bodyboard international magazine today. And that was the absolute first videos out on the internet. Now, someone asked in the chat room, "What? where can you see any of those? Are there any that are still around anywhere of those? Early you know, they're all up. They're all up right now. So I eventually migrated them to YouTube and Vimeo. Oh, okay. So I have my YouTube account, which is just my name, just Jordan Stallard. And then okay. there was also another okay. YouTube account for Bodyboarders Hawaii. We're originally with the videos, you know, we were, me and Danny Black were doing something with, with them. Oh, and then okay. we put them on the body Hawaii. And then I also have a Vimeo where I put some up also, because I found that YouTube was deleting the audio on some of my videos because it was, you know, copyrighted music. So oh, I, I, I yeah. yeah, so I recently put some on Vimeo. So, so all the videos are there. So they're all, they're all online on, on, on one of my cool. accounts. So for those of you that are interested, he had, he had uh, presented to uh, Rob White and I have some really nice photos and videos. And, and that's how Jordan and I actually really, go way back and then of course uh, reconnecting with him at the bia years later was really nice that was fun days mm -hmm. don't you think? yeah those those are fun the bias were great yeah back in the mid back in the mid 90s that, that was an awesome scene you guys created yeah it was two day contest you know two two heats going at the same time they were full like it was pretty amazing to see how many riders would would show up and were stoked about it yeah. there's also a time before before the internet the internet was just coming to be so that's kind of before the internet so you know you get to meet a lot of the writers and see a lot of the writers that you only heard about. Like you only seen the names in the magazines and then some videos. So you, yeah. you get to kind of meet them in person, get to know everybody. That's always yeah. kind of a, a cool, a cool social gathering. You, you, did, yeah. you did a really good thing. I, I didn't realize that it was before the internet. And you know what, what I always liked to anything that like I've done before the internet, which is like Maury Boogie and BIM and mm -hmm. CIA. It's like, how did we get the people there? As well? <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. Talk, word of mouth and viral and calling somebody up and saying, Hey, did you hear, you know, I mean, we did all this stuff, you know, before the internet. So like I said, it was really nice reconnecting with you on the BIM web TV because you had some amazing stuff that you sent us and it was really awesome. So ah, thanks, I, thanks. 
Yeah, I know that most people wanted to see you and talk to you today and are going to be watching this later. Mm -hmm. And wondering like, what uh, is, what is, what is this all about? And so when I first saw like vintage collect bodyboard collective, I thought, gosh, you know, this is, this vintage stuff's really getting popular. And so tell me, how long have you been uh, collecting bodyboards? I, you know, so I like a certain kind of bodyboard. Like I like kind of like the old school wide prone shape. So, you know, I'll kind of, I'll kind of show you some of those. Okay. Um, I think my bodyboard really took off probably like, let's say 1990 when I got, uh, got one of the numbered Ben boards. And so ever since then, that's kind of what I started like writing. So I'd, I'd always write these wide prone boards. And then, you know, then when I started writing for custom X, I'd have them shape wide prone boards for me. So I've always kind of been collecting that style board all the way through as bodyboards modernized, they kind of went more narrow and more high performance, but I kind of like the wide style. So I've, I've kind of collected them, kind of collected them this whole time. I've had a collection of boards I've ridden and boards that I would, you know, at the time I would like to see make a resurgence. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, probably, you know, so I've had, I've always had like, you know, a collection of my old boards and like probably through the mid two thousands, you know, I'd cry, I'd quietly stock Craigslist and find some boards here and there, you know, I maybe had like 10 or 15 boards. And then the last decade I started ramping up a little bit more. And then, you know, I think when the VBC started, you know, I probably had maybe 25 or 30 boards in the collection, you know, when I first joined in the VBC and then, you know, I kind of went, kind of went a little viral on it, kind of went a little crazy, you know, a little, little OCD, you know, stockpiling the boards. Yeah. Now, do you, I was going to say, do you have your first board? Did you manage to keep your very first board ever? I don't have my very first board, but my very first board was a Mori Boogie 143 with wow. skegs on it. Um, uh, uh, do, you remember, do you remember Paul McClure? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So Paul and me were neighbors. Paul's my best friends. Paul sold it to me because he upgraded to a Mach 77. So, you know, my very first board, you know, I, can, I can show it to you. I'll, I'll, I'll grab it from the pile. But that was that was my very first board. So, you know, through the years, I, I know which boards, you know, have the most meaning to me personally that I've written. And I've I've literally been able to recollect all, everything that had sentimental value because it was what I written, you know, during my journey as a bodyboarder. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So do you, do you have an absolute back there? I know those you've got more than that stack there, but do you have an mm -hmm. absolute favorite, favorite, favorite that is just your, you know, bar anything, no matter what the conditions are, it's going to perform for you? Do you have a board like that? Um. I do. Yeah, I, I got a couple of those. Like one of them is not really here. Um, you know, it's actually with a shaper. They're 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 making a custom version of it. Oh, but nice. then I, I have another couple that are that are high up on the list. You know, my my custom X PRP is on high up on the list. That was one of my favorite boards. I managed to recollect a very nice copy of it. Nice. So yeah. So as far as far as like, you know, people ask me what my favorite boards are in the quiver, you know, kind yeah. of my favorite boards are the ones that have personal meaning to me that I used to, that I used to ride back in the day, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that formed well for me. So th those are my favorite boards in, oh, in my collection. Nice. Yeah. So do you, you have know, the number favorite okay. like texture or skin or core or anything that I got to have that, you know, when I ride? Um, a lot of it's a template based, you know, I, I, I kind of like that wide style template. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, yeah. just, just from riding the Ben board, I got used to riding like riding that style board. And then the PRP, you know, that's a, that was a 1998 Custom X. Here, let me go grab that one here. Okay. There you go. Here's the board I'm talking about right now. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Th this came out in 1998. Um, when Custom X kind of first jumped into Poly Pro boards, it is super light. The template's amazing. Uh, just has the right amount of flex. It's really soft. Like it was just an all around good board. You know, I got 198. I had two really good Indo trips on it. You know, then a couple of years later, I I left at my driver's house there. You know, the board eventually just kind of deteriorated from being used for years. So, I found this one in Maui right before Maui trip, and I was I was so stoked to be able to recollect a good version of this one. You know, I've seen others that had reverse rockers that were beat. So I, I looked at others and didn't get them, but I was super stoked to to be able to recollect this one. Mm -hmm. And I ride this one sometimes. I still take it out and ride it. I ride it, ride it. At Kaiser's or at the walls, you know, I read a couple other spots and it, it still works great. It's, it's so, it's so nice and user-friendly. Yeah. Now, do you have, a, just, um, do you have one that, um, you know, I mean, like you go like a, <laughs> I don't know, like a chef and go get that knife to do that, that product and that board to do that. I mean, do you have, do you have boards that ride for certain different conditions and stuff? Or do you I do, do. Yeah. Oh, you do. And 
Yeah, I, I do. I, I have certain boards that write for certain spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Some boards I have plugs, some boards I don't. Yeah, some boards I'll, I'll use for certain, like, I'll, you know, for a short break board, I use a different board than like a regular daily driver. Sometimes I'm just in a mood for to ride certain boards, you know? Yeah. So sometimes yeah. I'll have a couple of them in the car and then oh, just yeah. kind of that's, that's when I get there. So I don't have to ride. Yeah. It's, it's been nice with all the. Do you have any favorite been nice color issues lately? Do you have any favorite colors of any of your boards? Trapped in the one that's got a certain color, like black or you know. It doesn't matter so much. I guess I like the pink rails, you know, because when you ride that, it just kind of has the nostalgic feel from the old Ben boards. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. besides that, I, I I try not to go black on the deck, you know, just because the way they heat up. Um, I try to go I try to go lighter colors if possible. Mm -hmm. But then but then I, I kind of like a mixture of colors too. You know, I like something that kind of stands out that, you know, someone could see by the way and go ask Jordan's board or something like that. But, um, mm -hmm. and then I, yeah, I, I guess I try to stay away from like the black decks and like the darker colors, just, oh, yeah. just for the, you know, sun heating up and melting the wax factor on them. Ah, mm -hmm. But, but if, you know, if, if, if I, if, if I get a board that's black, you know, that's, yeah, it's, it's, I guess not really that big of a deal. You know, I'm not going to turn away, uh, turn away a board cause it's got a certain color, but I, I, I try to mix it up as much as I can. That's cool. You know, Steve yeah. Johnson, he's saying hi from the Jersey Shore right now. Oh, what's up, Steve? How's it? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> nice. That's cool. All right. Yeah. Well, let's get into some of the boards. You're going to, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to go down your uh, pictures. You're going to put, show us some of those ones in the back there. Yeah. Let's show some ones in the back. I'll just okay. pull some out and like, talk about some boards. Yeah. Tell us, let's talk about some boards. All right. Well, cool. So we already talked about the PRP right there. Yeah. yeah. This one. There you go. That's a Mori 143. Wow. So Look at this that. is this, this was my first bodyboard. I have pictures of me holding it. I think in Capitola, Santa Cruz area, probably around 1986 or so. I think is when I got one of these. Yeah. So I, that would be uh, 143. Did you say? Is that what it says? Yeah. So 143, which I think on the Baha'i calendar, I think that means 1986. I think. Yeah, because 132 was what, 75, 76. So it'd be 10 years, 10, 11, 10, 11 years after. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I remember I got that one it was after I graduated from junior high. And I went in, I think that was 1987. So I think the board, it might have been 87 or 86. You know, Paul had it for a while and then sold it to me. So uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was kind of my first board, and you know I have good memories on it. You know I had this, the, my original board I had skegs on, which at the time we thought were cool, and at the time we thought would help you kind of hold the line as you, as you go down the face. You know I graduated from riding Whitewater, you know at Sea Cliff and Santa and in, in Aptos, Santa Cruz area. I graduated up to riding like Pleasure Point and the Hook and all these like surf spots. At the uh -huh. time we thought that they, skegs on the board help. You know you look at some of the high end like the turbo boards with skeg boxes and. You know, it was kind of the age of innocence and the kind of the age of experimentation for board design. So yeah, I have good memories on that. Just, you know, turning and trimming down the line, like on a, on a surf break, thinking like this is the best thing ever. Uh -huh. And eventually, you know, I, I graduated up to Mach 7.7 after it. And it's like, okay, now I can spin or now you can, you know, they can do stuff without skags. Ah, that was yeah. funny. Wow. Yeah, so that, that board has a lot of sentimental value to me. Uh, let's see. Here you go. This is a pretty cool, pretty cool board right here. Wow, I remember that. Remember that? Yes. I remember, I remember the early, the early, the early, early uh, gear guides, maybe 1987 or so, seeing the J.P. Patterson Airwaves boards with the design and being amazed at how, how cool it looked. Yeah. But given that I you know grew up in Northern California, the shops in Santa Cruz didn't have any of these boards in stock. So I remember looking at look in the magazine, seeing all these board brands that, you know, I probably never, I never got to see in person. Yeah. You know, that, yeah, that was the time too. Wasn't that ape? Wasn't that the gloves too? Wasn't that ape gloves? Yeah. So JP actually, he came into the VBC and gave a little story that he used to write for ape. And then, you know, he had, they had the airwaves uh, boards and then once airwaves shut it down, I think JP bought the, they bought the equipment and just rebranded ape. So oh. this was probably, also, also late eighties, but it was one of JP's personal boards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So, I, so I actually got a buddy buy this one. You know, when JP put up on eBay, and then I traded my buddy two really good boards for it. So, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely it's definitely high up on the list of you know dream boards that I always wanted. 
Oh, is that right? Wow. And, and yeah. JP's boards are very, very much in demand. The airwaves boards, you know, there's, okay. there's a lot of people out there, out there wanting them. So, so his boards, you know, his design, you know, his technology, you know, his channel rails, everything. They're, they're, they're very, they're very much in demand. So what so is that, is that one of the most demanding type boards? I mean, is that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, is that one of the ones that are is people ask for the most? It would be up there. I'd say maybe more and more in California than than let's say like in Australia or other places around the world. Uh huh. But I'd say I'd say there's 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 a lot of guys. There's a lot of stoke and froth on, on the old JP boards with this with with this multi deck skin deck. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is. I mean, these are separate pieces of foam right here. I mean, do, oh do wow! We see, yeah. Do we see anybody making boards with? Taking the time to cut out this much foam? No. We're not made together. We just we don't see that anymore. And what what is the uh, chance of that? Like you know the breakage factor on that with that many? I mean they're just the what? How's that hold I mean, up? I should say. I have no idea. I've, no, I've never ridden this one. I, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they had a JP on that. You know, this went straight to the pool room. You know, okay. in my case, my storage. Yeah. This went straight to the storage, but it just. It's beautiful to look at, you know. It yeah, just awesome. it represents a great time in the sport where everyone yeah. was experimenting with different things, trying to standardize yeah. on what works. Yeah. Now, what is the oldest board you have? Is that that 143 one that you have, that BE? Or do you have something older than that? Well, I guess that's the oldest one that I have here in, in my house right now, but I have a 132 BE. Oh, you so do? I guess that one. And I actually have a kit board also. So I think the kit board's probably even older, right? Uh-huh. So those those are actually they're they're in California right now though, so I can't really show them off. Uh, I have a I have a stack of boards at my parents' house in in my old room in oh Campbell, like Santa's area. Yeah, so I have a huge stack of boards from floor to the ceiling that have been lined up there. And every time I visit, I come back with like you know six or eight more of them. So oh it's it's kind of a long process to get my collection into one place. I don't know if it's ever going to happen because, you know, I occasionally add more every time I'm there. So I add more to the collection, but then I bring more to Hawaii. So it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a never ending thing. Yeah. We've got a couple good questions here. Uh, let's go back to this one. How many total seams are on that board? Would you say, I mean, they, they well, have to glue all those together, right? There's so it's like, well, it's, well, you got the rail seams. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten so i guess you got from rail to rail you got 10 different seams here wow that that's a good chance for some serious delamination right there <laughs> i would i would think so yeah, i would think so i don't wow. yeah I don't, I don't know yeah back in the day back in the 80s you know how they held up over time you know i've I, i'd never seen one of these in person until yeah. recently so i'm really stoked to have this because you know it's one of those boards you always looked at the bag and you dreamed about you know yeah. wondering how it's gonna ride you know, cool it was, but you know, I never, never got to see one. That's maybe awesome. if I lived in Southern California, maybe if I was going to the shops down there in the eighties, I don't know, did Jacks or some of those shops and they have all, they have all these, all these different boards. Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I, I, I never got to see them. So it's well, kind of cool to finally be able to hold one. You've got some comments coming through. Amazing to see those old boards without uh, cre creases on the bottom, which is so true. You know, it is. Yeah. I know sometimes sometimes I have seen boards for sale and you know you look at the deck you're like okay that's cool and then you, you see the bottom picture and it's like wah 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 it's like, <laughs> never, never mind yeah only I do have I do have some that have creases yep okay Steve Jordan asks as a writer for Custom X I'm curious what is the oldest CX board you have in your collection oldest Custom X board um I got one from 1993. Uh, it's not here at the house, but I got I got that. I'm trying to think if I have anything older than that that I've recollected. Um, I started writing for Custom X around 1992. You know, I had a couple of personal boards that you know, I you buy one, you write it, you sell it to a friend to use the money to buy a new board. So I don't have any of those, but I think probably 1993 would maybe be the oldest. Oh, Actually, okay. hold on here. Hold on here. Here we go. This is the Custom X Nels board. Um, oh, this wow. one, I think, I think this one was uh, probably around 19, is either 1993 or 94 when this came yeah. out. Yeah, because that's when I'm thinking 
Nelson was kind of in his heyday right then, so that makes sense. I'm thinking 93. Looking looking at the stamp, I'm thinking that was a 93 board. Now, has that ever been used? Has that board ever been used? You know? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> maybe maybe very, very lightly. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't been used. It's never unplugged, and I don't I don't know I don't know if it's been used or not. I had a buddy pick this one up for me, and yeah, it it feels pretty pretty much new. Yeah, it looks. So it remember, looks, this was this, from what I could see. It looks new. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was a cool time too. Look, but this is when you know Custom X. They used to be you know Debbie Shake Shake on the Matter of the Garage and stuff, and then around '93 they hit a stride where. You know, they just they blew up. You know, they brought in Dave Kniff to be the VP. You know, Keith Bestick yeah. was a sales rep. You know, they brought over Mike Fleming. You know, Nick, you know, yep. rebranded re him as the man. And yep. the Dells board was awesome. It was a, it was a, it came out as a stock board, and it was, you know, it was like a just great top of the line all around rider board. The only problem with the Nels board is they only came out in forty one inches, and I was kind of too tall for a forty one. So oh, I had friends yeah. who were shorter. Who, who, I had friends who were shorter who wrote them and loved them. They're like, oh, this is the best board ever. This board, yeah, board rips. I'm like, yeah. Darn it. Well, they, they made it smaller too for Nels, didn't they? Because you know he was shorter and whatever. Yeah, no, Nels is shorter. Nels isn't as tall as I am. So they, yeah. yeah. So they they only made it a forty-one. You know, I always kind of hoping that they would have made a bigger version of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, at the time. The daddy version of it. This question, I think he might have been. We're, I, I missed it from the one of the first boards to have channel rails. I think that was the eight board. Was eight. That was the eight board. Yeah, that was. Yeah. yeah. Here's the channel rails. They are really, let's see, hold on. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. And, and I didn't even know that until recently. You know, I didn't, yeah. you know, like I said, I never seen one of those back in the day. I just saw the pictures in the Mac, so I didn't know about the channel rails. But I remember other companies came out with channel rails in the 90s and the 2000s. But, yeah, JP was doing it, doing it since the 80s. Okay. Uh, now, uh if is there anything back behind you there you want to show us before we get to your uh, quiver? You know the some of the pictures of your quiver you're going to explain to us. Or do um, you we can just kind of show some more boards here. Or do you want to go right to your pictures and your quiver there? It's up to you. Oh, which one's the one that were on the Instagram there? Yeah. Um, or I guess have, we can. Or do you have some back there you want to show us? Oh, uh, we can show more more boards here. Okay. Because I know yeah. people are interested, so don't be shy. Yeah, all right. So here we go. Here's another cool board I'd like to show off. Oh, wow. These that's diamond cool. finger. Rails. Yeah, look at the rails. Look at these stickers in the bottom, too. Wow. Yeah. This, this is cool. Sign of the Times. I, I bought this from an old guy. Um, I found this one out in Sacramento. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I found it. I, Grabbed the way back from a snowboard trip, talked to the guy who owned it. He was telling me stories about him being a military in Hawaii in the early 90s and, you know, taking it out at Pipe. I mean, probably met Ahukai, but, you know, he's telling the story. He's telling us war stories and how, how well the sport treated him. So that's pretty, pretty well, stoked to see it and very stoked to get it. Let me ask you something. Would that be something someone would do so they could try to get more money out of you? I mean, you know, like I don't want to get rid of it and I'm attached to it and all that. Or, I mean, you um. Know. I don't think so. You know, I think this 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 guy just wanted to tell the stories on the board and stuff like that. You know, if he would have, he could charge more for it. You know, I would have yeah. paid it, but um, yeah. it wasn't one of the cheaper boards I've gotten, but it was still definitely worth it. So okay. I've, you know, a lot of times I've, lot lot of times I've told people, you know, I tell people I collect boards, you know, when I'm buying them off them, because sometimes you know you could find boards for cheap when people are cleaning out the garage, they don't really know that if it's collectible or not. So sometimes you wonder if you should not say anything because then yeah. people will you know try to jack the price up Ooh, this is collectible let me research it and put an email but but a lot of them a lot of the coolest you know sales i've had is where i've told the people they're like oh i'm so stoked it's going to go to someone who appreciates it you know i used to mm -hmm. love that board back in the day and i just i show them pictures of you know my quiver and my collection i'm like okay yeah. here it's gonna gonna be in storage with this collection it's gonna be showcased you know oh, or you know so right, see. We got coming in live here to ask you a question so sure all right, go ahead and ask away. Let's see if it's well. We got somebody. See, can you hear me? Good. <laughs> I see a Jupro there. All right. No. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, okay. let's, let's go. Uh, let's keep going. And uh, okay. if anybody wants to come in like that, you, you know, sure. I'll, yeah, uh, sure. But well, it didn't look like there was open a discussion here. 
Open discussion. Oh, yeah, what else? <laughs> here we go. You probably like these ones here. Oh, wow. What year is that? Circa? 1990-ish. 1990-ish. Yeah. This wow. is one of the first uh, thousand uh, Ben boards. Uh-huh. Wow. It's number 440. Beautiful condition. I uh, had Ben signed it in 2014. It's funny. He tripped out. You know, like I, I, I went to one of the Sandy Beach contests, and I brought this that one. I also brought this one right here. This is the T10. Um, wow. I brought him in a board bag. I kind of hit the boards, and Ben was kind of, you know, working the judge. He was working, working, you know, contest check. And I'm like, hey, can you sign a couple body boards for me? And then he's like, okay, sure. And I pulled him out of the bag, and like his 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 mouth, his jaw almost hit the floor. He just uh-huh. tripped out on that. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Um, so I, I think this one, this one here, the number Ben, this has a lot of meaning to me because you know I used to ride one of these, and I before then I was riding, you know, like Mori Mach Seven, Mach Seven SSs. Yeah. And then, and then I was in Hawaii, and you know I left my board, you know, in the car and a board bag when we went snorkeling in Hanama Bay, and you know my Mach Seven SS, the Swift can bubble to hell, so I was oh. very sad about it. So I was like, okay, death of the Mach 7 SS, you know, I had the first generation, but you know, at the time that was cool. But then, yeah. so my dad felt bad. He's, he's like, okay, we can get you any board you want here, you know, in Hawaii. So I looked at the turbo shop, I looked at TNC shop, and then, you know, I was looking at first one of the turbo boards, was, you know, say, you know, one of uh, Russ Brown's creations of the vinyl decks right. and graph. But then instead I, I went for the Ben board because, you know, they didn't really have those in Hawaii. Yes, so I went for the Ben board and I, I came home with it, you know, it was, Stiff our cell. It was just just dead flat. Took my first wave and just I I pearled like I, I couldn't even ride it. It was so flat, and so different from what I was used to. What? So, uh, but then once. Go ahead. I was just going to read this uh, question. Is that a lemon lime pack cobble board behind you? Possibly. Oh. <laughs> Should I grab? I'll grab those next. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. the next question so, is. Um, I got another question here. Um, Patty, what board would you be excited to see uh, the most? Oh, well, let's see. I would probably, ah, let's see. I have the most amazing board right now anyway, so I I, I don't know if I could get excited about anything else, but I have a, a Custom X Custom Galeria Tomega template from the old school. Mm. Thing. That board, I'm telling you. But I would probably be excited to see, I guess I would probably be excited to see a 132 BE um, Mm -hmm. 2600. You have that, one of the little thin ones. I do. I have one of the little little thin uh, 132s. It's it's in California. Ah. I I, I have, yeah. So anyway, that's a great question. And thank you for asking it because, you know. It's kind of exciting seeing all these boards since you've lived through all these different eras that they came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Back to the uh, Lemon Lime Pat Caldwell. All right. Lemon Lime Pat Caldwell. Let's see if that's what that is back there. Yeah. Well, ah. Oh, wow. <laughs> there we go. Look at this thing here. Wow, that looks like it's waterlogged. <laughs> it. It's not actually. It's pretty light. It would be actually a nice rideable board. Have Pat signed it recently. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. So this is this is the only Pat Caldwell. You know, of the old school Pats, this is the only time I've actually seen this color here. You know, yeah. most of them are blue and white or blue white with yellow rails. I have yeah. a blue and green one also. But this is this is the only one I've seen of this color. Wow. Well, Steve spotted it for some somehow. He spotted it back there. Or maybe he knows yeah. it or something, you know. Yeah, and check, check this out here. Um, you know, Pat Caldwell did the step rail bodyboard, right? Right. You know, yeah. Just recently uh, released those, so I got one, and I was thinking, okay, what what should I do for my colors? So like I was looking at I had a couple different ideas. I'm like, let's do a lemon line step rail. So. Oh, yeah, look at you. Here's the deck. Wow. I did a white rail. I did a green bottom. Wow, that's a nice looking board. Yeah. So, so what um, number is that? I used uh, this board as inspiration for it. Oh, and then instead wow. of doing a split deck, because they didn't have green and they weren't doing split decks on these, uh-huh. I just I just made the bottom green. 
Nice. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. what number are so you on the board? Isn't that a? I'm I'm number twenty five on it. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, you jumped on it. Truth be told, I don't really. It doesn't really phase me on what number it was. Like I didn't even know the number on there because yeah. I'm gonna ride and destroy it anyways. So yeah. you know, it's not. You know, it's, by the time I'm done with it, it's it, it's not really that much collector value. It's it's a rider board. Exactly. As I'm watching you, I'm thinking about what the people that are watching are thinking, and they're probably just going, you know, holy moly. I mean, not only do you have boards, you know, that are like all over California and Hawaii, but you also mm -hmm. have boards that are sitting there. And you, you have you ever done a ledger on what what you've got? I mean, what your collection's worth? I have no idea what it'd be worth to be honest. I, I haven't I haven't thought about that, you know, but gosh, as a collector, you to... well, I've got you know twenty thousand. Twenty-five thousand dollars worth of boards, or I don't know. It just came to my mind I, when I saw those boards. But, I, I, I would, I would think, I would, I would think more. Well, I like to think more, anyways. So yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. You know, I, I always kind of had that thought. Is okay. What if someone came along and offered to buy every board for me with a lump sum money? How much I would sell? I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I and mean, what, uh, yeah. what is the? Uh, I mean, like one of those band boards has got to be what six hundred dollars or something like that. Are they that much or? Oh, more. They're worth more. A lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot, a, a lot more than that. Wow. Well, see, that's that's why I'm thinking the audience probably, like myself, doesn't know this kind of stuff. You're the, you're in that business, so and you're over there yeah. talking to people and seeing sales and scoring boards and what would you say um, was the best score? You know that I mean, like you got a eight hundred dollar board for twenty bucks at a garage sale. Do you have any kind of story like where you you really scored something? Um. I have a lot of boards that I've scored like that, so <laughs> yeah, a lot, a, a, a lot, a lot of scored like that. Um, I guess let's see. Trying to look through here. Um, I guess the Shawnee board I got for twenty five dollars, the BZ Shawnee, you know, board, which is kind of like a mini bun board that was really cheap. Uh, uh -huh. the, the nails, uh -huh. the nails board that I showed you. Uh, not that one, but I had another sister board of that, same condition, everything that I got for twenty five dollars. And I actually yeah. since then I traded yeah. it to, to Lewin Nguyen, who was on here. I traded it to him. And oh. I had two of them. So oh. no, I, I I have I have a lot of boards like that. The custom okay. XPRP I showed you, I think forty dollars in Maui. So yeah. no, there's ton, tons of boards that I I found for cheap. That's gotta be cool. this. This was also a stone. Yeah, it's fun. This was also too before you know. I, I think recently last couple of years, a lot more people have started collecting, so it's a little harder to get boards. Oh, they go, they tend, the scores tend to go go a lot faster because mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, searching and then you know everyone, a lot of people know where to search now. Yeah, I think when the VBC started, I was searching in places where you know other people weren't, so I found boards that were just sitting for sale for like six months. I'm like, hey, do you have this board? I know the ad was six months ago, and I'm like, oh yeah, I still have it, but now like that board would go, it'd be gone within hours. Oh, isn't that something? That's so yeah. cool, though, in a way. It's so cool. So, Paul, uh, yeah. Paul LeClaire says, uh, Paul, uh, museum, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> one day, Paul. <laughs> we were just oh. talking about you earlier. And, yeah, one, oh, one day, hopefully. Museum? It, it, would, it, would, it would be fun. You know, it, it'd be, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to be able to do it. Yeah. You know, mon awesome. Money, obviously, is, is, you know, a little challenged for, you know. Yeah. Well, you would money, money to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Are you the one that has the most boards, would you say, or do you know somebody that's got more boards than you? Uh, there's there's people that have more than me. I know Russell Morris in Australia, he has more. Um, really? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if anybody else has more. I'm 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 up there. Yeah. But I know one thing with with my collection versus other people's is, um, you know, there might be some people that have more. There's some people that have like maybe mintier collections like better condition boards or some that have more maybe more valuable but i think i have the most diverse collection like like there's there's a lot of collectors out there that they want they want every board from two brands like they'll or they'll All be right. like i'm a mori i'm a mori collector i want everything that mori made or i want everything that bz made um oh wow i'd rather have i'd rather have two boards from every brand than have every board from two brands yeah so yeah. my collection kind of you know, kind of, kind of, I like trying to mimic the gear guides that used to show like just all these, 
all these like you know yeah. good brands and offshoot brands and i yeah. like to kind of i like to just kind of know that hey i have an eliminator in my collection yeah. or i have this brand in my collection that, that's a quiver yeah you have a quiver of a little bit of everything exactly all right let's go through yeah. I have questions coming in here so um i spy challenger quiet classic uh back there too is that a dinacore back there? yeah okay. it is you want to see that steve you want to see it all right let's let's okay. let's uh let's bust these out here okay and then we get uh Jim asking, what is what are some of the boards that are the most valued? Well, you just uh, talked about the Ben board. Yeah, the most valued would be the number Ben. That would be the most valued. And also the Ben 10. Those would be at the top of the list there. Um, I think this is the one that Steve is asking about, the Kawhi Classic Dynacore. Oh, wow. Look at that. Uh, that is ancient. That's what, 91? A 91, 92, um, mm -hmm. these boards I thought had a lot of significance. You know, they are super, super light. Um, wow. They had, some, they had some quality, they had some QC issues where they had a lot of rocker and they would break easy just because they were such a light, low density uh, core. But uh -huh. at the time, you know, boards were heavy PE or heavy RCL and these came out and it's like, wow, let's see how light these things are. And yeah. then uh, what's pretty cool with these is, you know, I went over to Kauai for Harry's uh, 50th birthday. Oh, and wow. The quiet classic guys were there, so I had all of them sign the board too. Oh, how cool! Oh, yeah, so I got pictures cool. with, with Harry, Jason Brown, Chris Temper, Kyle Maligro, oh. Chris Burkhart. So they were all there, and we, oh, we wow. had them. I, I, I brought, brought three boards over with me the cool guy and have them sign them. And this That's was another cool. one too. So this was a PE board. This board, I wow, I actually yeah, this one got signed also. Um, Right before I started riding for Custom X, I used to ride one of these. It was my daily driver Santa Cruz board, like very wide nose. You know, it was PE, so flexible, good with the cold water. So I have a lot of good memories on that one. And that was kind of for years at the top of my list on what I wanted to recollect. Um, there's another, there's another Kawhi classic right here. You've got a Jordan a, a Cutmaster bodyboard, king of the quirky boards that came out. Oh, I'd love to find one of those. Didn't I think? Yeah, didn't Kevin Wood? He he made those or had those, I think. Um, yeah, I'd love to find one of those. Oh, this, this board's pretty. This board's pretty significant here too. Check out this one. Um, this one does have a little bit of creases on it. Uh, this was wow. this was Harry Antipala's uh, personal contest board. This is the one that he won. I think the Imperial Beach contest with or whatever contest he he. He won back when he did the Bud Pro contest in the early '90s. Uh huh. And and you so have. I, yeah, I got, I got it from Harry a couple of years wow. back. Oh. Wow. Yeah, so I I bought it off Harry. You know, cool. moving and tired of storing it. You know, so and this thing, this board is it's it's crazy light. Like it's a it's like you pick it up, it's like a feather. But I guess back then, you know, when you're doing Bud Pros. You know, you wanted that that light that lightness was a competitive advantage for doing floppos and you know one to two foot beach break. Yeah, Glenn's asking how many places do you have boards stashed? <laughs> <laughs> um, California, I know. They're kind of getting condensed down. Yeah, I have a big stash at my parents' house. Um, Lewin, you know, was one of my you know was one of my uh, stash places in Southern California. Um, oh. I think I'm down to one or two boards with Lewin now that I've bought off from recently. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple, I have a couple of different friends' houses. You know, I'm some, sometimes, sometimes I, I, sometimes I kind of forget where I have boards. Um, uh -huh. I have some in Australia too. You know, Danny McCallum's got some boards recently. He got some Madrid boards for me. Uh huh. So yeah. So I guess Australia, you know, various places in California. I know I have a board out in Florida for me, but I'm as much as possible. I'm I'm trying to. I try to condense it as much as possible down to you know my my old room at my parents' house. Yeah, well, that's so it's, it's cool. kind of an, it's kind of an ongoing project, that's for sure. Uh -huh. uh, there were some there were some times where I had boards literally all over California, and when we visit, you know, I would uh -huh. I'd do I do road trips, and my wife would laugh at me because I'd be meeting people like off the freeway, you know, driving to San Diego, uh -huh. be, meeting at places in L.A. and Orange County to pick up a board. So it was it was it was kind of comical. Wow. Um, so uh any what does this say any uh, oh any man, man mantas in your collection that i okay. do i do i think you have any here um actually i have an epo gun here kind of one of the newer ones and really? then in my storage i have the gator skin um epo uh and i have a i have a manta wing nut also uh-huh 
So that one, that one's in my storage. But yeah, I, I have a I have a couple of mantas. Well, that's very cool. Okay, so I've, I've got to just put this question up. But we're I, I, we can't do it tonight. But uh, Patty, do you have any cool Paul Roach stories? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, yeah. I mean, you know. Well, first of all, he lived, you know, like what? Um, oh gosh, you know, not that far from me, you know, here, twenty miles south. But uh, he wouldn't. Re if I walked past him at the mall, he would not even know me or recognize me because, keep in mind, it's been thirty years, and I'm now seventy-four, and he's forty-something, whatever. But um, I do have a. Um, I do have some uh, some funny stories, especially the first time I saw him ride when he was like 17. He, he li I was a judge that day and he literally blew my mind, but he, he was good from day one. Just absolutely unbelievable. Let's get back to George. It's, it's this is all about George. With Roach, it's, it's crazy though, when you watch, when you go back to, on YouTube and you watch Roach from Bodyboarding Enough Said, when that came out, 1989, 1990. Oh, yeah. yeah. That first hack he does, you know, on that whole that whole section, you know, where first he's spinning around with the camera, and then the, the that first hack he does is, is mind blowing. It's it's amazing. Oh, he yeah. was oh no, just just like an athletic yeah. freak when it comes to drop me, you know. Yeah. Because like when we were judging that day, that I mean, I remember being up in the you know judging, and when he got out on his heat, we all were going, who, uh, what? Like mm -hmm. who, who? I mean, stuttering like <laughs> who is that? You know, I mean. No, he charged onto the scene like there was no charging, you know. And yeah, um, deservedly so, you know. And then I didn't, I saw him through. He didn't, one or two maybe BIAs when we went pro, and then I didn't see him again. A BIM cover, I remember that. And didn't really actually see him again for, what, 30 years until last November at the APB down at Imperial Beach. I saw mm -hmm. him. I don't think he saw me, but I saw him, and I go, dang. It's just, you know. Anyway, there, that's the story, I guess, a real quick one. But I was really, I was really impressed to see him. He was with Paul. I think he was with yeah. Paul. Today. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to your quiver. Do you want to, uh, thanks for answering my question. <laughs> uh, something, my question, I wrote the, oh, you wrote the Manta Pro X for years. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, oh, Manta story. I, I, um, I had bought one of those Manta Ross Hawk boards. There was a bodyboard shop in uh, San Luis Obispo called Pacific Leisure. Um, you know, it's three hours south of Santa Cruz. So we go down there, we could see all these cool new boards that we didn't see in our home zone. And I bought the Manta Pro Ross Hawk and I honestly hated it. It was, But it was big and it had this really grippy deck that like, I just, I felt like I just couldn't do anything on it. Like, you know, but I used to do contests and I would turn my jerseys inside out because I didn't like the way that the contest look, lo like the sponsor logos would stick to me when I try to spin. So I, I didn't like it. I sold it really quickly. So, um, yeah, back in the day, you know, that, that was my, my that was my first exposure to the Manta boards is like that grippy deck just did not work for the way I ride. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people like it, so, but you know, it's kind of one of those two each their own kind of things. But, you know, recently, you know, I, I have a couple of guns and I have a wing nut. Um, Wow. I've come across other Manta boards uh, and, you know, the Manta boards to me, a lot of times are kind of tradable because, you know, I, I got, I got the ones I wanted and then anyone else I come across, you know, they're, they're like, they're good trades, like having the baseball card where, you know, you yeah. have yeah. numerous copies of it and then you use this trade bait for something else. Uh-huh. Well, we're, we're, so to me, Manta, we're that? blazing through this hour. I cannot believe it. I knew this was going to happen. So let's get to your, uh, can we get to your pictures now and you, um, you tell us what what we got going. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay, so if I okay, so let's see. I'm on the we're, we're streaming the Instagram page right now, right? right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and you can just scroll and talk whatever one you want. If you're just joining us, we're with uh, Jordan uh, Stallard, who has an amazing collection of bodyboards from throughout the years, and we've been showing a couple that are back behind him. If you want to see it later. Uh, just go back and look at some of the ones he talks about. Now we're going to go into some of the ones that aren't with him, but he owns and tell us a little bit, some story. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, let's see. So I, I just started this Instagram page a couple weeks ago. Like I've had a photo album of my boards, you know, on my phone for a while. And then people ask if I have something and you know, I can, I can, I grab all the phone, repost it, but I, I just, you know, I, I just fired up this page a couple weeks ago and I, you know, also, 
talk to some other collectors, you know, to fire up, you know, a similar page. So, you know, I got VBC underscore Jordan. We got VBC underscore Glenn, VBC underscore Dean. So I thought it'd be pretty cool just to have, you know, the more of us just can put our collections up on Instagram, the better, you know, Instagram, it's just a nice, convenient, convenient, easy way to show, showcase your boards. And there's some pretty cool hashtags that we got going too, which also make it easy. So um, I'm also, I'm also going to use this to kind of, keep a mental note of myself, what boards I actually have in my collection, how many I have. I, I kind of lost track of you know, how many I have, but once I get them up here, then I'll know. And then if I sell or trade a board, then I'll just delete it from the page. So these are, you know, eventually this is just going to be an ongoing project. I have a, I still have a bunch of board photos I've taken. Um, the reason my boards are here at my house, they were already, they, I brought them back last week to take board photos for this. Um, you, nice. can, you can see the one with the rock background, you know, that's just in my, my front yard. So yeah, I've been taking photos and just kind of posting one or two a day, you know, when I have time just, just to try to get, you know, just get the catalog out here. Uh huh. Uh, so I'm asking, do you have any pics of the science MS? What is it? MS seven there. Do you have any of those? MS seven? I, I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't have an MS seven. Um, and these are just these are just my vintage boards, so I'm not going to be putting. You know, I have reissue boards that I ride that I have too. I'm not going to be putting right. those on here. So these are these, yeah. are these are just the vintage ones. And I actually I actually don't have any science boards in my collection yet. Um, I'll get one eventually, you know, but yeah. I just don't have one yet. But I know, you know, I can find one when I need. They're relatively new on the scene, aren't they? I mean, they're not like vintage. Yeah, they started in the late '90s, so they kind of. In the late 90s, I guess you'd call those vintage, but then they kind of transitioned to be one of the premier modern board companies. Uh huh. So yeah, so eventually I'll, I'll put one of the first generation sciences in here. Tell us what you got there on those pictures. What what are some of those boards? Well, let's see. So this is the number Ben you just saw. Here's a T10 that you saw. Um, let's see, here's a BZ. Here's a BZ all slick. Let's see. Hold on. I have to log in here. Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, here's the BZ All Slick. That's a pretty cool board. That one's in my storage. Uh, it has a slick skin deck, like everything's slick. So the deck is slick, the rails are slick, the bottom is slick. Nice. You know, back in the late, back in the late '80s, you see these in the magazines. You know, Ben Severson, Seamus, and crew um, were writing these. Yeah. Big, you know, having a slick skin deck allowed you to put your sponsor logos on the deck. Um, right. You ever yeah. see have, have you, Ben? Again? Do you ever see Seamus or Ben? Uh, I see Ben from time to time. Uh -huh. You know, I see him usually at the contest. I haven't seen Seamus, but I know he's, uh, I think he's a fire captain or firefighter. He's something in the fire department. So I, I know he's around. Wow. Um, I, I haven't ran into him. But so this is one of the ones that's kind of high up on the collection. But then what's pretty cool too is um, we did these hashtags. So like, if you know, I'm tagging my BZ boards, VBC underscore BZ. And if you go to this hashtag, you follow it, it's going to show everybody's bz boards who's kind of followed along so all the other collectors you know who have posted their boards and done the same hashtag now you're seeing my boards mixed in with everybody else's boards oh that's very cool like these hoku hard like, like this is glenn Polacare right here you know he he, uh -huh. he puts the, the board you uh -huh. know so I, I actually really like how glenn did that i kind of wish i did that on mine but maybe, maybe i may reshoot my board photos and do well, that what, did you like put it at an angle or something i can't see it so small so can you see now yeah, what did what did you do different? Well, he when he shot the board, see, so he he writes the board, the title of the board here in the oh, photos. I, so yeah. he, I yeah, see. Uh -huh. so he right. basically so he, he basically shot his boards for further away and left some space at the bottom yeah, to write in the name of the board. Right. Yeah, which is pretty cool because then it presents itself really nicely. So then we go to Glenn's page yeah. here. Yeah, and look 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 at look at Glenn's catalog. He he oh, he writes all the names of the boards there. Wow, we should have got him on tonight too. He should call in. Yeah, um, uh, well, he's uh, around. Can you can you can you call in? Glenn, you there? Yeah, I can put call in, or he can come in live. Well, let's get Glenn in here. Yeah, I always like to talk to Glenn. Glenn's, Glenn's awesome. I've got a. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see if it'll go as a. Uh, scroll across the bottom. Let's All right. So oh, let's see here. Um. Uh, because you're on screen share, it will not show the phone number. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, he can call in. 
Okay. Oh, here you go. Um, you guys asked about the Manta. Here's my Manta winged out right here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, someone was asking about that. Yeah, someone was asking. So, so I have this one in my quiver. Um, let's see if I have any other Mantas in here. Oh yeah, here's here's a here's the Epo gun. This is kind of wow. like the old texture deck. So I have that one. Um, I have another Manta Epo gun that I haven't taken pictures of yet, but I will. Um, Mock 7 SS first generation. This is the board I had that you know got uh you know got the slick bubbled when I was in Hawaii. Oh yeah. yeah. So this is what, this is what I used to, I used to ride one of these. Uh-huh. Um Very yeah, there's the there's the lemon line pack called well. Uh there's Kinobi Gee board. I know a lot of people like this oh, one. Oh, yeah. Well, that's an oldie. Look at that. Yeah, this board is actually yeah, this board is actually right here. Can can you guys see that? No, you because we got it on screen share, but I can put it up. Oh, you got screen share. You sure. to, hold on a sec. Let me put it up for you. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, you have a Kainoa too. Wow. Yeah, so this is the Kainoa that's in the picture there, and I got Kainoa to sign it also in December. That was pretty cool. Oh, there you go. I, yeah, he, he's a little slippery. He's a little loose of track down, but I saw him. I saw him at Sandy's Life Garden, so I just saw him there, and I just ran to my storage, which is like five minutes away, and grabbed the board and came back. And luckily, he was on his work break. He was riding, so I just ran up after he caught a wave. And was on the beach. I, hey, can you sign this for me? And I got pictures of it. Um, this board came from San Diego. This was funny. You know, this board, kind of this older lady posted it. She was she's very centric, you know, talked on the phone. She was very out there, and I think – Probably a, a bunch of people were lining up to get this one, but I was one of the first. I had a buddy go bring money real fast for it. But then she was, she told me about how she had a crush on Kainoa when she was a little girl and all this kind of stuff and how hot he was. And I'm like, I know, I'm like, I know Kainoa. You know, she's like, I'll sell it to you if you can get a picture of him with my board. That would, that would satisfy my schoolgirl crush dream. So I, it took a while to get, but I actually, I had her phone number still. I actually, uh, I, I took the pictures of him signing it and holding the board up and I actually sent it to her and then she was wow. she was so stoked. Yeah. So I I, I I I you know I came through on that promise to her. I said, Yeah, one day I'll get him to sign it and I'll send you pictures of him holding your board. So she was very stoked. She's like, You oh, tell him he's hot, hot, you know. Tell him he's hot. Jordan, I've got a question that came in. It says, um, hold up your phone and ask Jordan if he has a pro team board right there. You see it? I've never heard of a pro team board, but I guess now I got to add it to my bucket list of <laughs> brand offshoot brands to add to the collection. Darn it. <laughs> I can see that. You know, sometimes people will, will post like uh, another brand. I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot about them. Okay. My, my hunt, my hunt is still going. You know, I don't have everything yet. Featuring the pro team rocket built for performance. Uh, I, man. I never heard about that. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. Newport Beach. Yeah. Hmm. Jack Caldwell, Pro Team. Oh my gosh. Okay, Tony, you got us on that one. You, you saw me there, so I guess I, I'll have to research it. That's pretty uh, stoked to have this one. Remember, remember the Eliminator body boards? Oh, yes. Wow. And he's the bag, you know, wacky vinyl decks, you know, that picture of Bill Hebner with that bottom turn with the, the look on his face like he's going to kill you if you drop it as a wave. You know, yeah. I always kind of wonder what they're all about, but you never. Do you have a pipo board? Not a pipo board, but a um, real pipo? Do you have real pipo? Uh, I do, yeah. I, I have, I have real pipo. It's not, not here, but I do. Okay, so we got a question here. What's the oldest board you own? That would be either the 132BE, the mini one that you were talking about, yeah. or it would be the Mori kit board, be one of those. Do you have either of those behind you? No, I don't. Those are actually both. At my parents' house in California. Yeah, yeah those are two yeah. very special boards there. Yeah, I would definitely they're, check those. They're, they're boxed away. You know, I, I just I haven't brought them out here yet. You know, yeah. they're they're what, they're, what they're, they're, they're the twenty three hundred in. Is it in pretty good shape? Which one? The one thirty two? Yeah, the yeah the twenty three hundred, the little one. Um, it's in okay shape. Uh huh. Uh, I can hold on. Let me, I have pictures. Hold on. Let me let me hold up my phone here. Okay. And uh, we got another yeah. question coming in while you're doing that. What is uh, what is the oldest board that you own? And that's you answered that one. And what about uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. we'll get it up here? Hold on a sec. Okay, you ready? Yeah. 
Let's do it. Hold on here. Okay, I can't really see. I can't really see you for some reason. Yeah. Uh. Oh wow. Hey, Mark, you see the picture there? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's in pretty yeah. good decent shape. Yeah. Yeah, that actually that came from JP Patterson. So. Oh no, kidding. He was wow. he was condensing down. So this one came from JP a couple years ago. Uh, here's the Mori kitboard right here. Oh wow, it's a blue one. Wow. Yeah. So I think that was in relatively good shape, and that's, yeah. yeah. Would uh, I, I, I'd love to ask what you paid for that? If you don't mind. Which one? This one? Yeah, the kit board. Um, not sure if I should answer that, but it was okay. it was a good deal though. Okay, all right, don't answer it. Uh, what? Okay, here's another question. Do you also collect accessories and fins? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Not really. <laughs> not really. Um. I, well, I, actually, I, have, I, have, <laughs> I would I would collect some of the some of I have a, some of the crazy offshoot accessories like yeah. I have a pair of fin fins like do you remember the skegs that you drill on and you screw into your fins I have those oh, um, if God. I could find some fin fins I would want I would want those uh so I guess I, I kind of like the crazy stuff like like yeah. remember back in the day in the bodyboard magazine you see all these really crazy accessories that you look at it yeah. like Posi no way in hell that's no, no way in hell it's gonna work. Yeah, pause the track, you know. There's no way in hell that's gonna work. Um I know. So I don't chase it too much and fins I don't chase too much because they, you know, like the rubber kind of de deteriorates on them. Yeah. Um but I guess I guess for fins, I guess I collect old school Viper V fives. Oh wow. But I but those are those are what I ride. So I collect yeah. them to put yeah. in a pile to ride them because those are those are still my favorite fins and you know I, I like the way the old vipers feel the ones where fred used to you know glue in the you know the the neoprene pad on the roof of the foot pocket so those are the only fins i collect and they're to ride you know i've i've come across some red leaves back in the day you know as, as soon as i get those i'll i'll i'll, 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 re, I'll trade them to someone or give them to someone who needs them oh yeah those those are those were cool so you and they're i cool, yeah. uh, you're saying you and i need a bob ford's extreme fun board I'm calling first dibs on that one, Louie. <laughs> What's up? Quite a second, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you the second. But that's that. Yeah, that's that's one of the ones that's kind of at the top of my, you know. It, want okay, that. so there you go. Now we know what you're looking for. Okay, and uh, yeah, that, that's one of the that's one of the ones I want. Uh huh. Shade pins. Yeah. Paul's asking about uh, web what, gloves. Web gloves. Um, I don't collect those too much. I had a really good pair of uh, BZ web gloves I got with the board purchase. I gave them to Davey and Alexander from Australia. He just started the VBC. I gave them to him to use. Um, my dad, my dad hasn't surfed much recently, but my dad would always surf with web gloves that so we'd always use the yeah. apes. Um, I rode yeah. for TFL for a little while. Like I used to be in the gloves until I got over it and then the I wasn't so much into them. One, wasn't apes the first one on the scene? I think they were. The ape I think webs. I think I think webs. As far as I knew, webs might have been the first. Like those okay. are the first ones I came across. Okay. But then it it might have been the first, maybe down in Southern California. But the webs yeah. was kind of a popular brand in Santa Cruz regions. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because apes was Southern Cal. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. All right. So you've shown us all your uh, Instagram page, and it's growing, and it's, it's under growing, yeah. it's under Jordan Stallard. Is there anything? It, well, the Instagram's under VBC underscore Jordan. Oh, that that your what Instagram is? Yeah, yeah, the Instagram. Like, I have my, I, I have a Jordan Stoward Instagram, but that's just my regular page for like wave photos and sunset photos and stuff. But then, you know, Instagram's one of those things where, you know, you end up, I end up creating different accounts for different things. Like, I have one page, you know, for my 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 regular photography, the wave photos, photo I take of riders, sunset yeah. photos, whatever. Um, I have an Instagram page called Ducky Goes where I take pictures of rubber duck surfing. Uh, oh God! I do, I do the I, I do the vintage bodyboard collectors Instagram page. You know, I run the, just the, the general page uh -huh. there. I repost a lot of people's stuff. And then just a couple of weeks ago, I just I did the VBC underscore Jordan just for my my personal board collection. Yeah, that's cool. And, and now you had it for today too. That's really good. And this will go uh, by the way uh, for those of you that are watching and want to go maybe look at it later. It's going to go to a whole bunch of different places. It'll stay on cool. the bodyboard BIM place. It'll go to History of Bodyboarding. It'll go to Patty Serrano's page. It'll go to my uh, YouTube channel, Everything About Everything. And it'll go to my website, which is pattyserrano.com. So this will go out. And a lot of people do watch them later. So that's why I wanted to make sure we got everything uh <laughs> We got everything in. So didgeridoos? Question mark. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, 10 o'clock. They're getting hungry, Jordan. They're looking for dinner oh, now. This is. I, I, 
I collect other things too. I've, I've collected a lot of things over my life and didgeridoos is one of the things I collect. I, li I like oh. to play the didgeridoo and collect them. So yeah, Paul's laughing too. They, they know, they know, they know about the didgeridoo collection. A page for lunch pail. Yeah, no, I haven't done the page for my lunch pail collection yet. I haven't done the page for my tech decks. I haven't done the page for, yeah. I haven't done a page for all my CD collection because I sold most of those off before I moved to Hawaii. So yeah, I've uh -huh. kind of been a collector, I guess, over the years, you know. I could make a page for my garbage pail kids that I probably yeah. have in my parents' house for all those Star Wars toys I used to have. But oh, God. you know, I think of all the collections, obviously, obviously bodyboard the bodyboards are the, the, yeah, the best. You've got you know, an amazing collection. collection. And I'm just so honored yeah, to, to have you and spend some time with you tonight. Um and we're up to an hour, so I was just going to wind, you know, wind a few things down here, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. One question coming in here. Chris originally rode the, it was a 2600 or the 2300? I thought it was the 2300. I might be wrong, because I've got, what do you, what do you, what do you know it as, Jordan? The little board. The Me? Little board. I, I honestly, I have no idea. I got into bodyboarding probably around 1986, so okay. that was that was way before my time. Yes, the 2300. Tony's saying the 2600, so whatever. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I, I would believe whatever Tony yeah. and you know all the old school riders, you know, who, who were around back then, riding back then, would know. Because my my, yeah. my knowledge of boards really takes off once I started bodyboarding. So probably around like 1986 on. Oh. I guess I may be kind of a, a little bit of a walk encyclopedia for a lot of boards, but before that. I have okay. collections of the older yeah. board. I, I don't know. Yeah. Three hundred, yeah. but you know the point is like when Lewin asked me what board would I get excited to see, because you know mm -hmm. you see all your boards and they and they look like body boards or boogie boards as they used to be called, but you see the twenty three hundred, and that board actually got a lot of groms, you know like I remember I've got pictures of my son that was like four and five and he was then eventually ended up standing up on it like a little surfboard. So that has a lot of a big place in history. If you can ever get your hands on that that board, and only Maury bought, built it, so I would say, as time goes on, you're young, it's going to be worth probably more and more money. If you see one, don't don't uh, discount it because that was the first thing I thought I would be excited to see. So mm -hmm. there you go, you had one. That's awesome. All yeah. right, so twenty three hundred, and Chris Powers probably yeah he was probably the first one on it and the ads and stuff. Uh, it was so cool. What does he say? Jim saying it's so cool to see a number of boards, uh, friends that I used to see every day and completely forgot about. Yes, me too. I mean, like yeah. seeing that Canola board and that uh, the Kawhi Classic. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, that was great, Jordan. Seeing they bring all back a lot of they bring back a lot of memories to a really cool time in the sport. You know, is there any last minute things you want to tell us before we go? You know, uh, what um, you're for. Uh, someone asked, what was the most expensive board you paid for? You didn't want to say, did you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, think, I think the most expensive was actually a uh, uh, Custom X Air FX. Um, okay. And that one, I, that one also I paid, though, because the guy, you know, he had, to, he had to bring it from France, you know, to bring it from France to California and drop it off at a buddy's house. So okay. that one, um, you know, I, I went for it. Uh-huh. And what was it? So yeah, I, how, much, how much was uh, it? Like two hundred, uh, two hundred dollars or so, two hundred something dollars. Oh golly, Moses! Yeah, sometimes the boards are too expensive. You know, um, yeah. if people are spend a lot of money on it. You know, I'd rather let them have it. You know, if, if it me, if it means that much to somebody, you know, I I try to get in bidding wars on boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, you know, like. Like among amongst us, our, amongst like my crew of collector friends too. Like we don't really get into bidding wars. We don't try to snake each other on stuff. Yeah. Like we all almost try to. We almost try to work together as a team. Yeah. Like I've I've heard of other areas where like you know, snaky stuff happens. Like you know, someone yeah. will put a board up for sale, and then you know, other people will tell the seller it's worth more money and try to swoop in and yeah. grab it. So, yeah. you know, among, amongst areas where I've been looking for boards, you know. All, you know, all of us collectors, we all kind of know each other and like, you know, we don't, we don't do any of that. We kind of work together as a team. And like now a lot of us, you know, we know what each other needs. So like, I, like, um, like Lou who was on here, you know, the Danny Kim board, that was his ultimate Holy grail board. Awesome. And I saw a beautiful, a beautiful Danny Kim board for sale in Hawaii. It was amazing. That Astrodeck on it, just mint condition. 
wow. instead of grabbing it for myself, yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, hey, Louie, this person is selling this board. This is what you want. You know, yeah. PayPal me the money right now. I'll get it for you. We'll get any kind of sign it. Wow. You know, it's, wow. it's yours. So That's we all kind of, you know, work, work together as a team. Yeah. You know, what board are you on the lookout for? What can we look for for you? I what guess you the Bob Four is extreme, extreme fun would be one of them. Okay. You know, that's just one that I haven't found yet. I got to ride one in the 90s. It had a lot of, you know, advanced features on it, you know, that, you know, like, like they had the channel rails, a lot of grooves. It was pretty cool. I, you know, one of my buddies had one. So that's kind of high up on the list. Besides that, I've almost literally found everything that I've, that yeah. I've wanted, that I've wanted to recollect. Yeah. Like, I, like, like I'm always, I'm always looking for like better versions of maybe boards I have. Like if I have a board and I can find a, a, a version with less rocker or better oh, condition, then yeah. cool, I grab it and then sell the other one. You know, I, I, try to have, I try to have duplicates. Like if I, you know, if I have two of a board, then the second copy will become instant trade bait for somebody to trade for something else. I had some boards that, um, right. let's see, I had some boards where maybe the seller might have brought to Luan Nguyen, who was, you know, who kept in Orange County. And then my friend Aaron Batula picked it up and brought it up to my, you know, my buddy Jared's house in San Jose and left it for me. And then when I came to San Jose, I grabbed it and brought it to my parents' house. So I guess um, there's been been some like that, you know, uh, we call it the, the, the meal service, the, the meal train could sometimes yeah. get a little complicated with the moving parts. Of course. But, you know, it's all, it's all. It's all it's all part of the fun, you know. Everyone yeah. kind of has fun doing it. It's amazing. You know, I don't mind. Yeah, I, I I pick up boards for people. I I meal them for people. You know, I'd be in California on a road trip and you know meal boards across the state for you know for other people too. So it's all it's all kind of fun. Uh huh. You know, at least you get to kind of handle handle the board in the meantime and you know get check it out and stuff. Uh huh. So yeah. Oh, he's saying. So I guess no. to you, how many hands a single board has passed through before? reaching you from seller to you well let's see so if a seller had a board gave it to luin luin gave it to aaron batula and oh, brought to my buddy jared so maybe five sets of hands okay, before it got to me asking okay that, yep. that's what you're asking glenn yeah mule train mule yeah. train yeah, yeah. The, mule, the mule train okay, um cool. that's actually cool. i had some come, i had some come recently from australia too that went through the mule train oh yeah right? jeremy harris you know Super cool Australian bodyboard came out in February. You know, I got boards that I I traded for another board in Australia. So it was shipped from Jeremy to let's say D5 bodyboard shop, and then Jeremy picked it up from D5 and then brought it out here. So yeah, I've, I've had some pretty pretty complex mule trains going. Yeah, and uh, Michael says, and you get to meet a lot of new bodyboarders when you when you mule boards too. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is true. Yeah, yeah. You know, Michael, I've you... all kinds of new stuff here tonight, Jordan. <laughs> Stuff that I didn't know about that you guys are doing. So it's, it, it's very cool. I just know that um, for me, wanting to talk to you was because of our BIM Web TV history and our BIA mm -hmm. history. And then now you're mm -hmm. so fascinating. I know a lot of people will be fascinated with it. And, you know, like I said, we usually go up to an hour. I always go over an hour, but we're uh, we're there now. So if you have any last closing comments, I'd love to hear them. Anything you want to share with anybody? No, I'm just stoked to be able to share everything with 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 you guys here. You know, vintage body boards. It was just a it was a cool time where, you know, the boards weren't made in one central you know one centralized factory in some parts of the world. Like they were just made everywhere, and all the companies were just, you know, just just trying to figure out what works best. So you know, we all these wacky designs, wacky templates, crazy materials, vinyl decks. You know, all these different features that everyone was independently trying to push and you know figure out what would what would went out and become like kind of like the standard standardized bodyboard that everybody rides yeah you know eventually it kind of consolidated to you know you know a couple of companies you know custom x you know um you know mike stewart you know the ms turbo boards you know the b the bz's but you know before that you know just all these kind of crazy different board designs it's, it's kind of, it's kind of neat to you know be able to find them recollect them and just kind of show everybody now you know what it used to be like back then yeah so it's been been kind of a fun times, and it, it it was really cool too to, you know, see the B, VBC the VBC spring up maybe 2016 ish I think 2017. Oh you know, yeah. There was, when I joined, there was like maybe 800 people involved. It was kind of small. Like now there's 20,000 of us. It it's allowed a lot of us to reconnect with old friends. It's let us, 
you know, as well as connect with new friends, you know, like super cool bodyboarders from all over the world that we would have been friends with back in the nineties, except the internet didn't exist. So, you know, we didn't, we didn't know about them. So it's been, it's been, it's been really neat, you know, to just kind of see everybody just kind of, you know, gather in one place and just, you know, talk with a bunch of froth and stoke about it. You know, it's cool to see people get more back into bodyboarding that we're out of it. It's cool to see them pass it on to their kids. Oh, yeah. so, see everything. And I thank you so much. And maybe we can do it again as you get more boards. We'll come back for part two. 